Hey guys, um, I had planned something, or sort of talk, talk, talk about beforehand, but silly me, I completely, utterly forgot it. I know I should have written it down. I probably should have written it down, but I didn't, so here we go. Um, it's Saturday. I guess this week I want to do something a bit more fun, maybe, a bit more random. I don't know, just to lighten th things, th things up a bit. Um, as you can probably tell, um, I've got a new lamp. Yep, that's the lamp. <laughs> Ash children, do any of you guys have any imaginary friends? You know that post secret that said saying, um, it says something like, uh, I have 12 imaginary friends, um, and and they're coming with me to college, I think. As social creatures, and us having the ability to, Im to imagine things, having an imaginary friend, a child, is extremely beneficial to our, in our development of social skills. Um, because the children who have imaginary friends they sometimes seem to be able to have better communication skills than the kids who didn't. Simply because, maybe because they had more practice. Even if, by our own definitions, that practice was not real. It was still practice. I guess that's why, even though most older people, adults, teenagers even, don't have imaginary friends, it's because we've come up with a substitute for them. Instead of talking to someone who we've never met in real life, we imagine situations, scenarios, in our head, with the person that we do know in real life, and then talk to them. It can be seen as a way of, um, as a method of problem solving. A bit like, um, how sometimes they run a simulation to see the outcome of an experiment. If you can experiment with different social situations and different ways of reacting to those different situations, then when we actually come across those situations in real life, then maybe we'll then we will be able to handle them better. If we look at our friends, we see how our positive traits, which is, let me say, are of reflected in them. One could say that imaginary friends as a child is they are made up of all the traits which we wish we had, but if they do not feel like we, we have the confidence or that it's socially unacceptable to act the, the way we, we want to act, so therefore our imaginary friend is a, is a manifestation of this. Imaginary friends are a psychological period in which in which we go from one a mental state to a different mental state to a more mature mental state. But what what about those people who still have imaginary friends? Those people they have transferred into the into the new state, but taken the old state along with them. Instead of rejecting the old state, they've melded the two, meshed the two. Now what I'm talking about here is um is people who, I guess, see the imaginary friends in in their mind's eye, in their head, in a way. Not real life, because society teaches us that that is called hallucinating, and that means that you're insane. Although I don't believe in the word insane or sane. I just believe in different ways of thinking and different brain types. And with that, PSC, I shall bid you adieu. And have a wonderful week.